home on leave, Eva and Christmas. Two paratroopers overheard making indiscreet remarks to some girls. Both were charged, court-martialed, and sentenced to death within hours. To maintain secrecy, no actual training was undertaken with the hollow charge weapons, and the men mainly practiced by carrying stone weights of similar dimensions. Two full dress rehearsals were made with glider landings on sites similar to the actual target area. These revealed the DFS-230 gliders needed the shortest docking distance to land on top of Fort Ibadama. Modifications were made by incorporating a wooden drag brake that dug into the ground beneath the glider. The improved DFS-230 was tested by the famous world champion glider pilot, Anna Reich. Other pre-war glider champions were persuaded to join Sturmabteil and Koch. They quickly proved to be superb pilots of the DFS-230 and were chosen for the assault on the fort. The more novice Luftwaffe pilots were to land beside the bridges. Mac! Mac! Each DFS-230 flew at a specific Smile. day 52. Say hi, everybody! A group of oh, a wild a child! Psycho! Savage! And glider pilots. Okay, go back to playing. In the spring of 1940, Group Granite moved to Czechoslovakia, where it practiced attacking the casemates of the captured Venice Rhine. Later, Struma Palenkov gathered at the airfields of Ostrayen and Butvailahov, near Cologne, where the final training was undertaken. The combat engineers of Group Granite were divided into 11 sections, with one section to a glider. Each section was assigned a particular number target on the fort. The other groups were each assigned a bridge over the Albert Canal, with Group Steel attacking Celtic Zone, Group Concrete, Stronghofen, while the bridge at Cannes was the target for Group Iron. Since the Belgians wired all these bridges for demolition, it was vital for the gliders to land as close as possible to the targets and attack with surprise. To this end, Stuka dive bombers were provided for close air support within 15 minutes of the gliders landing. But they had the support for only 60 minutes because the stupid were being reassigned to other tasks. Back. After 40 minutes, Back. what are you doing? Would be from what are you the doing? The groups at the bridges, you raising hell? Followed by an ammunition resupply five back. minutes later. Get About 90 minutes after the initial landing, artillery was expected to be available for fire support as the German 6th Army advanced towards the bridges from Holland. For group Who's that? At Fort Ibanimal, the first priority was to silence any anti-aircraft weapons that might engage the gliders or supporting stupid. That's me, buddy. Followed Crocky. by the destruction of the observation domes above the casemates. Once the gun emplacements were blinded, Group Granite was to destroy all the guns pointing north towards the bridges. The combat engineers would then be relieved within 24 hours by the Army's 51st Pioneer Battalion. This unit was motorized, and its sole mission was to advance as quickly as possible to the counter bridge and cross to Fort Ivanema. Once there, they were to relieve Group Granite and continue the assault into the fortress. The complex plan was now in place. Sturma Kralenkov was ready and waiting. Did you hear, By May 1940, morale was low for the troops at Fort Ivanema. For weeks, the sentries scanned the horizon to the east Kittens of the playing. offensive, while barges moved along the Albert Canal, business as usual. The fort was protected by only 650 men, with an additional 233 men four miles away at Vaughan. The troops at Vonk <laughs> were being the hell with that, I'm out of there. I ain't going near him. Over the previous month, there had been several alerts, but they had all been false alarms. Then at 0030 on May 10, 1940, 
Jorge Bonimaro was put on full alert. The troops rushed to their battle stations. The commander of the fortress, Major Dertan, was summoned from his headquarters in the village of Ebanamal along with his fellow officers. He immediately telephoned army headquarters at Liège, which confirmed the alert. Dertan then followed his wartime standing orders. Outside the main <laughs> entrance of Block 1, Don't like to let go, do you? Where the administrative personnel worked during the day. <laughs> Little dog. <laughs> they were to be pulled down in time of war. But due to the shortage of personnel, the only men available for the task were the gun crews. The crews from casemates Minord and Misur, as well as half the men from the other gun emplacements, were rushed to Block 1 to empty the Poor old Crocky. But the alarm plan required the guns of Kupala Nord to <laughs> fire the sequence of warning shots for like the beating or giving up. Bridges and to summon the reinforcements. Someone's supposed to be asleep. Gone. Yeah, you. But most of the gun crews were supposed still be in bed. the administrative offices, and the few gunners that remained were unfamiliar <laughs> with the firing procedure. It was now 0230. Two hours had passed, and still no warning shots had been fired. The task was given to Kupala Sud, but the gun's firing pins had recently been removed during an exercise and not properly replaced. An armor finally fits the guns, and the first warning shots were fired at 0325. But the muzzle flashes set fire to the camouflage netting that covered the cupola, which then obscured the periscope. <laughs> How did you the get in here? The firing sequence was interrupted, and the warning shots went unheeded by many Belgian soldiers in the surrounding countryside. At 0330, you got a little bit of cheating there, buddy. You got to work for it. Come on, get it. They flew west, climbing to a height of 8,500 feet. A series of large bonfires and searchlights pointing into the sky directed them to the Dutch border. <laughs> Come here for a second. Come here for a second. Are you doing it? Hey, who's that boy? 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 One of the Ju-52 pilots gave the incorrect order for the glider of number two section to cast off its tow rope. <laughs> the glider wild. pilot knows this is wrong, but he follows orders. <laughs> the glider was cast adrift to land in Germany as well. Yeah, that's craft dinner. You smells. Dad just had craft dinner. <laughs> yeah, I had craft dinner. Yum yum, craft dinner. Look at the gut. Inspect the gut. <laughs> without a shot being fired, the chances of a successful assault on Fort Ebanimal diminished. So good night, everybody. I'm wild, but soon time to go to bed now. At 0415, Dr. <laughs> was informed that unidentified aircraft were flying Holy the terror! He immediately put his anti aircraft defenses of four machine guns on high alert, but aircraft were already silently circling above Fort Ivanimal. The crews of the anti aircraft guns peered into the sky. Right.